Hey everyone, Vault Fox here, and in today's video, I'll be going over all of the soft parts of my Bo Katan cosplay, including the flight suit, the boot covers, two different ways I went about the belt and holsters, as well as adding some Velcro and elastic for the armor attachments and how I got her headband to stay on my head. I have several other tutorials on my channel going over how I made her helmet, the jetpack, and her armor, and they'll all be linked down below, along with some of my older vlogs of me actually working on this costume in real time. So whether you're working on a Bo-Katan cosplay yourself, or you're just honestly curious about how I did things, let's get into the tutorial. First up is the flight suit, and I bought mine off of Amazon, but it looks like it's no longer available. I'll try to link the closest one that I can find down below, but I basically bought this specific version because I liked the belt that came with it. I decided to buy this because at the time I was also making a Mandalorian costume for my husband, and I really could use all of the help that I could get, so I ended up just purchasing the flight suits. It was one of the best decisions I ever made for my sanity at the time. There are other patterns available on sites like Etsy for this suit that I'll make sure to link down below if you're more interested in actually making yours and sewing it. But just keep in mind that I haven't personally used these patterns, so I can't comment on how easy or hard they are to use. I ended up going with a size large for my flight suit and it fit well pretty much out of the bag. Now the fabric on this is pretty good quality, though I would say that it is pretty thin. It's not thin enough that you're gonna like see your underwear <laughs> underneath it or anything, but it's not that thick quality fabric that you would, you know, someone in like the Air Force or the Army, like that type of thick fabric. I don't mind because I wear this at like conventions and I, I feel like anytime I'm cosplaying it's always warm outside, so the cooler I can stay the better. I will say like the brown bits that are on the vest, those are just made out of fabric. They aren't leather and I believe in the show those detail bits on the vest are actually leather or like a faux leather kind of thing. So if that kind of aesthetically bothers you that that is something that's on this suit. There are a few like small tailoring things I did to get it to fit a little bit better. The first thing that I had to do before I even did any of that tailoring was remove all of the sewn on armor with a seam ripper. This is pretty easy to do. It just might take you a little bit to get it all off. It's not sewn on there super securely. I then use an airbrush and some white paint to distress it a little bit. I was basically tracing around like all of the seams. Um, you could really just kind of go to town however you want to. But the reason that I did this is because the color of the flight suit is a little bit too dark for my liking and this just helped lighten it up a little bit. One thing I should note about using this specific type of airbrush paint on this fabric is that it will wash off if you, you know, wash this in the laundry. At the time, I was really crunching to get this costume done for C2E2, so that's why I used this airbrush paint that I had on hand. However, if you want something a little bit more permanent, I would use something like a fabric spray paint, or you might want to give one of these fabric airbrush paints a try, which I might actually do because I need to re-add these details to my flight suit. The airbrush paint it dries fairly quickly, so I was able to go in with some of this brown Angelus leather paint and add that in to the front details on the pants. In order to figure out where the Velcro needs to go on the suit, I did what's called a dry fit of the armor. So I took the flight suit and put it on and basically took my piece of armor. From there, I could kind of guesstimate where the Velcro would need to be. I then took some strips of Velcro and pinned them to the corresponding spots on my flight suit where the armor would sit. So as you can see, I have some little pieces of Velcro on the front where the chest piece will attach to. Also got some on the shoulder pieces as well as like on the knees and the sides of the hips. I pinned all of the velcro into place and then sewed it all down. The hardest part to sew was probably the shoulders. You kind of just have to like finagle and make sure you're not sewing through the entire piece itself. Just work at it, you'll get it on there. I have seen people have success with E6000 glue and gluing that directly to their flight suit. I just have personally not done it. I don't know how that would hold up in the wash or anything like that, but if you have done that, definitely let me know down below if that's like a viable option. When I went to try the boot covers on, they were a little bit too tall in comparison to the shin armor that I had already made. So I went ahead and folded over the top bit of fabric over on the covers and pinned them in place with these clips that I have and went over to my sewing machine and sewed that new hem in place. And once I was finished sewing in that hem, I just clipped away that extra fabric and they were fitting my boots way better after that. And the last thing I did was I sewed on a long strip of Velcro to the very front and that is obviously where the shin pieces are going to be attached later. I also ended up adding a strip of elastic on the bottom of the spats to kind of keep them in place whenever they're actually on the boot itself. And as for the boots, I'm just using an old pair of fry boots that I have because they're super comfortable. Comfort beats screen accuracy any day of the week for me. And honestly, I already had these boots lying around, so I'm not just going to go out and buy another pair of boots just for the heck of it. 
it. Now it's time to move on to the belt and the holsters, which I've got two different ways that you could go about doing this. Now I mentioned earlier that I ended up getting this specific flight suit because I liked the way that this belt looked. A lot of the Bo-Katan flight suits that you might see out there on other websites, they look fine until you get to the belt. Like some of the belts are just like not great looking in my opinion. But again, this one had a pretty serviceable one. However, the only issue with it was that the holsters that were on it, they didn't fit the Westar 3D prints that I had. So I decided to completely remake those bits and made those out of EVA foam. I went over this in a couple of older vlogs whenever I was building this up for C2E2, but I basically used the old holster straps that I had to pattern the new ones out of EVA foam. I took my Westar prints and traced around them to get an approximate shape and glued everything together with contact cement. And these West Star prints I ended up getting off of someone from Etsy. I'll make sure to put them on the screen for you guys. They were excellent prints. I did not feel like 3D printing blasters. I hate 3D printing blasters. So anytime I can just outsource that pain, I, I do it. I then went ahead and drummed all of the edges on my EVA foam for a more natural look and then went outside to prime everything with some Plasti Dip. I think it took me about like two layers of Plasti Dip to get these fully coated. I then painted everything with some Angelus leather paints. But if you do this, make sure that you end up sealing that in the end because if you use Angelus leather paints on top of anything that's not leather, you have to seal it because it doesn't properly cure all the way. I didn't know this until doing this project, so now you know. And I finished off my pieces by sewing some top stitching with my sewing machine. And as for attaching it back to the holster, I used some of this hardware from JJ Industries. To attach the holster on the front, I used the provided studs that came with that JJ Industries kit. And on the back side, I just ended up using Velcro. It ended up being a lot easier than trying to attach two more buckles to it. You could totally do that if you want to though. I wore this belt for basically a year and it really held up well. However, I really wanted to invest in in something more quality. And specifically, I really just wanted a nice leather holster belt to go with my outfit. So I ended up purchasing a holster from Delta Leatherworks. It is a beautiful piece and I am just really excited by it because the main reason that I got it was one, obviously I wanted it for my Bo-Katan costume, but two, as I mentioned in previous videos, I really like the way that this new like live action night owl Mandalorian lady style looks. And I have a lot of ideas in my head for custom Mandalorians to make. And I figure if I have this nice belt, I can just translate it to each of those. So there you go. I'm enabling myself. <laughs> the gloves I used are supposedly the screen accurate ones and I bought those off of Amazon. And to attach the hand armor, I ended up just using some sandpaper to roughen up that surface to kind of give it a little bit more tooth. And then I glued on some Velcro with some E6000. I've seen other people use magnets to attach these so they don't end up like ruining the gloves. They'll make like a loop of elastic and have it around their hand. And then there's a magnet right here. And then the magnet on the bottom of the armor will just kind of snap in place whenever you wear that elastic underneath your glove. So that's another option if you like to reuse your gloves and not just have them live in a bin for a costume. <laughs> like I do apparently. All that's left now is to add a piece of elastic to the sides of the headband. And I just did this with some super glue. And that wraps up all of the work that I did to finish up this costume. So all that's left to do now is to do a proper suit up in the costume. I start off by doing my makeup and putting my hair into a wig cap. And to be honest, I don't really do anything special here or crazy other than filling in my brows a bit. I put down some foundation and I also make sure to kind of angle in my brows a little bit like she does on the show. And I also like to finish off with some freckles around my cheeks and on my nose. Then I put the headband on over the wig cap and I pull the wig over top of that. This wig is an Arda Wigs Heidi in the color dark copper red. And it's actually my Commander Shepard wig. So that means that there are some bangs there that I kind of got to push in get them out of the way. But hey, I love reusing things across costumes, especially wigs. Next thing I do is I put the flight suit on and step into my boots and smack that shin armor on top of that strip of Velcro, as well as attach the knees and hip armor to their respective strips of Velcro on the suit. This is where the belt comes in and the belt actually goes on in three separate layers, which took me a while to figure out whenever I first got it. The first step is putting that elastic belt on with the two holster bits. And this is so that you can kind of move them around and make them to sit correctly on your body. And also because there are actually no like attachment showing of how this is all put together, which I thought was very clever that he did it in this like layered sort of fashion. That elastic belt is then covered with the thicker leather belt. And then this is also attached in the back with some Velcro. And then everything is topped off with the thinner belt with all of the boxes on top of it. And this actually clips on each side, but I like to keep it all clipped together in one piece and just clip it on the right side. This is the part of the suit up where I start to actually need some help. And Brian will come to my rescue and get the back plate as well as the jetpack onto my back. I have a whole other video dedicated to how this works and how everything is put together as well as how I actually built the dang thing. So if you want to check that one 
after this video, then I will make sure to link that down below for you guys. After the jetpack is on, everything else goes on by the power of Velcro. The chest plate, both of the shoulders, and the gauntlets slide on and stay in place with some upholstery foam that I attach with some hot glue on the inside. The last thing I do is I pull on the gloves and put on the helmet, and then I am ready to make the internet angry that I am holding the Darksaber. If I can have a Darksaber in my pictures, I'm going to have a Darksaber in my photo. And that concludes my Bo-Katan tutorial series. Thank you all so much for sticking around and all of your support throughout this whole journey. I'll make sure to put all of the tutorials on the screen and they'll be linked down below for you. And as always, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for all of your generous support of my work, of what I'm doing on the channel, and all of this cosplay stuff that I'm just ingrained in and makes my brain hurt, I guess. And as always, I will catch you guys next time. Bye!